Welcome back to the final episode in the Monster Mash Chronicles. And in this episode, we are sinking our teeth into the world of vampires, where we will be deep diving into three incredible vampire reads, Mina and the Slayers, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, and House of Hunger. Each of these books brings a fresh twist on the vampire mythology blending together gothic horror with complex social themes. So Mina and the Slayers is the second installment in the Mina and the Undead series by Amy McCall. This is a really nostalgic young adult book. So in Mina and the Slayers, we are continuing to see Mina's transformation, who's a headstrong heroine with an E who is grappling with the ever-increasing threat of vampires in New Orleans. I really loved this story. It is such a fun ride. It's so nostalgic and I really enjoyed reading it. So this one I think is a really good book and it is full of a lot of different issues um, and it's not just following the vampire trope in itself. Um, there is a lot into this. So we will deep dive into this book in a bit. Then in the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, this is by Gritty Hendrix. And this is a story that is following a group of suburban mums who are grappling with the threat of a vampire in their little town who invades their personal bubbles and is causing havoc in this small town I soft DNF'd this book a couple of years ago. Um, I started to read the first two chapters and it just was not hitting with me. I was not enjoying it. But then I decided to pick it up again during this season and I'm so glad I did. I thoroughly loved this book. It is an incredible read. Um, The social commentary in here was incredible. Um, I feel like (laughs) Grady Hendrix writing just is so good it's a mix of actual horror with some comedic elements and I really enjoyed this book I did not want to put it down it was a page turner for sure and I cannot wait to delve into this book with you then we have House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson this is a five-star book I absolutely adored this read when I read it Again, this was another page turner. I did not want to stop. I finished it in a couple of sittings and I ate this shit up. Loved every second of it. The House of Hunger is a handmaid's tale sort of vibe when it comes to the vampire trope. And I really enjoyed the expression and the female experience that is kind of touched in this book. Um, So yeah, I really cannot wait to delve deeper into the meaning behind this book with you in the next couple of clips. Let's talk about Mina and the Slayers. This book and this series is not your typical vampire story. This does combine the gritty real world challenges of adolescence. We are covering grief, loss and self-discovery and mixing in the supernatural as well, because it would not be a vampire book without that. So to talk about the vampires that we are exploring in each of these books, the vampires in Mina and the Slayers, or the entire series, these are the embodiment of crime and corruption. And we see that a lot in more modern vampire stories. And also I feel like the vampires are also like a metaphor for Mina um, because she is facing a lot of inner demons as well. There is that sense of her transforming and coming of age and I think that the vampires in here are also kind of a symbolism for that. So Mina's story is really about reclaiming power and like I mentioned this book is centered around a coming of age narrative so that's what sets Mina and the Slayers apart from other traditional vampire stories. Mina's interactions with the vampires pushes her to explore and reflect on her own self, her own mortality and really um, examine the blurred lines between good and evil. 
we see themes of trust and betrayal and how finding one's tribe is so important. And these are really central themes to this novel and I'm guessing this entire series. So Mina's interactions and struggles with vampires are not just physical confrontations, but they are really symbolic of challenges faced even in our real world society uh, because we also go through trust and betrayals and finding our own tribes and finding the people that we actually trust. So I feel like Mina and the Undead series is really exploring that and giving a deeper message about the vampire trope. And then journeying into suburbia with the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, this book mixes horror with the complex societal norms and the expectation that is placed on women in these suburban lives. This book is also set in 1990s, um, which is similar to Mina and the Slayers. And this book is following a group of moms who are living in South Carolina. And they form a book club to escape their daily routines. And they start exploring more darker books. Um, But then a sinister turn happens when a mysterious man joins their town. And using their knowledge from these true crime books, they are exploring the idea that this man is actually a vampire who has moved in to the neighbourhood and really exploring and invading their space. I feel like Hendrix is cleverly using the vampire trope to explore the hidden dangers that are lurking in plain sight. So whether that's the fear of outsiders or the neglect of women's voices or simply how evil lurks and preys on complacency. So the vampire that we explore in this book is not your typical charismatic vampire that we see in traditional or more modern vampire stories, but instead he is a predator and in every sense of the word, preying on the complacencies that exist in these suburban areas and he uses charm and manipulation to get what he wants and in a way exploit the fairy people who over time have grown to trust him. And there's a really strong theme of how women's fears and concerns are often dismissed by the patriarchal society. And I feel like there is a lot of discussion around those societal norms, especially back in these days. And sometimes that is present even in today's society. So I feel like that is such a clever use of the vampire trope in the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. At the true heart of this book, I have noticed that there is a real sense of community. It's about survival and how far you would go to protect the people that you love. And even if the world refuses to believe your concerns and your fears. And even though Grady Hendrix is a man, there's a really strong thread of feminism in this book. Um, It is written as if the housewives have no sense of power. But actually, their strength lies in their solidarity. And the vampire used in this story represents that fear and that threat of maybe somebody evil is living next door. So this book explores vampires in a really different light. And I feel like that's such a unique opportunity and interesting way to explore societal norms within a fiction book. And then we deep dive into The House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. This is a lush gothic tale, which is set in a world where vampirism is intertwined with lush and desire, hunger and class dynamics. So we're introduced to our main character, Marion, who is escaping poverty by joining a wealthy home as a blood maid. And the elite aren't just your typical vampires. But they survive on blood in a way that symbolizes their power over the lower class. And the vampire trope that's used in House of Hunger is essentially about the desire and the exploitation of power. And in this world that 
Alexis Henderson has created, vampires and bloodmaids are indulging in a grotesque cycle of consumption. In this novel, we are um, touching on themes of survival and agency, which is pretty similar to the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. But instead, in The House of Hunger, we are also exploring the seductive allure of Power. Marion's journey isn't just one of escape. This is one of a moral complexity as she navigates a society that is built upon the suffering of others. So this one really does delve deeper into the social classes and the sense of power and exploitation of that power and overindulging in something that you probably shouldn't be overindulging in. This is steeped in feminist um, plot lines. And there is a lot of seductive manipulation in here. So this does cover a lot of really big themes. And Alexis Henderson is using the vampire as a symbol of those societal issues and talking about these themes. So you may be asking, what really connects all of these novels together? Each of them being centered around horror. They don't just use horror As a way to explore vampirism but rather this is a more deeper metaphor for really hard-rooted societal issues so whether that's Mina and the Slayers which explores the adolescence and a sense of your own personal power or the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires critique on gender roles and a social ignorance or whether that's in House of Hunger which is addressing class struggles and moral decay. So the vampires in each of these stories are tools to explore human fears, fires and injustices. We see the constant pull between immortality and the inherent violence in sustaining that. So these stories explore what it means to be a monster and who is truly monstrous or the corrupt systems that allow them to thrive. So there you have it a journey into three modern vampire stories and these stories do more for us than just to scare. They challenge us to reflect on the world that we live in, the monsters in it or sometimes the ones we become. So thank you so much for watching this Monster Mash Chronicles episode. Um, If you are interested in the other episodes in this series I will drop the link in the description and in the cards. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the macabre and everything spooky. And drop me a comment about your favourite vampire story down below. I would love to explore that with you. Or if you want to just let me know you were here, you can drop a vampire emoji. I guess until next time, keep your pages turning and embrace the darkness. Bye.